Hi, my name is Devar Sisso, and today we're going to be learning about what does it mean, in Abdolach? What does that mean? What is an Abdolach? What is crystal eye? What is the Baal Shem Tov talking about? When we talk about this concept of mirrors, that's what it literally means. Everything in our life is a mirror. And what does that really mean for us? How does that work, that everything in my life is a mirror? When I see something in somebody else, that means that I have it in me. If I see somebody's bad midos, if I see somebody has a really rotten character, that means I have the same character. That means I feel the same way that that person does or act the same way that that person does. No, I don't act like they do. I don't see life the way they do. So what does it mean? What does it mean that everything in our life is a mirror? Everything that we see in our life is a mirror of what's going on inside. Who said that it's a mirror of what's going on inside? Today, what we're going to be learning is some crazy, 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 amazing Torah on this concept called crystal eye. What's crystal eye? It's deep Kabbalah. I'm going to try to make it as simple as possible and really, really give you a basic, basic understanding. I really hope my lips are matching my words. If you are here, can you just say hi and tell me that my lips are matching my words? Because Facebook messes it up sometimes. Let me know. Let me know if you see my lips matching my words and that it's not off. Okay. Okay, great. I got the okay. Here we go. So let's begin. Now we're really beginning. We're understanding this concept called En Abdolach. It's brought down in the Torah. It's brought down in the Torah that when the Jewish people were in the desert... They were given man, right? They were given food from heaven, right? This food from heaven is called man. Now the Torah talks about it, the, the Pasuk that talks about the man, it says, gad lavan That's what it's talking about. It says, which means, it's describing the man. It says, gad lavan. It, comes from the, it comes from something, it looks white, okay? And it literally looks like a crystal eye. That's the Pasuk that describes the man. We're going to get back to this Pasuk in a second. That's the Pasuk that we got this whole concept of En Abdolach Crystal Eye. Now let's understand what this concept means. The Baal Shem Tov. He does like this. He says like this. Adam Arishon. First, man. Man sins, hides. God comes to him and he says, Adam, what happened? Eyeka, where are you? And Adam says, uh, uh, it wasn't me. It wasn't me. It was the woman that you gave me. She's the one that enticed me. That's why I ate from the forbidden fruit. Right? And Hashem then says, okay, Chava, what happened? And Chava was like, it was my fault. It wasn't, it wasn't my fault. It wasn't my fault. It was the Nachash. It was the snake. He, he was the one that made me do it. And Hashem says, you can't be here. You guys can't be in the Garden of Eden. And that's when all the problems start for the Jewish people, when they get kicked out of the Garden of Eden. Now, what does it say over there? This is wild, okay? What was their mistake? What was Adam and Chava's mistake? Was it that they ate from the forbidden fruit? Was it? Was, what was the mistake that they made? Meaning, how would they be able to fix their mistake? They messed up royally. The one thing Hashem told them not to do, they did. The one thing they were not supposed to do, they did. Okay, so they messed up royally. But after they made the mistake, were they still in Gan Eden? Yeah, they were. Were they still able to eat from the fruits, from living in the garden? Yes. What was the, what was the straw that broke the camel's back? It was the lack of taking responsibility. It was that nobody here took responsibility. He comes to Adam and Adam says, it wasn't my fault that I ate from it. It was the woman that you gave me, that chick. She was the one that made me do what I did. It wasn't me. It wasn't my fault. I would never. Like, I would never, okay? And then he goes to Chava, and he says to Chava, and she was like, I would never have done it, but, like, the Nacha, she was so, like, convincing, and, like, he pushed me, and he made me do it. The problem wasn't the fact that they ate from the fruit. The problem was the fact that they didn't take responsibility for their mistake. That was the problem. That was the problem, and that's why they got kicked out. Meaning... The inability to take responsibility. What is responsibility? It's having the correct, it's the ability to have the correct response. 
That is what responsibility means. It means to have, to have the ability to give the correct response. I screwed up. I'm not saying I didn't. I'm not saying I didn't make mistakes. But I'm going to take responsibility for what I did and stop looking to blame the world around me. And stop looking, she made me angry. She made me miss the bus. He made me, you know, have the life that I had. If it wasn't for him, I wouldn't be in this situation. Okay? Pointing fingers at the people, the circumstances in our life will only get us kicked out of the Garden of Eden in our life. Which means you made a mistake. It's okay you made a mistake. Sheva yipol tzadik become. It's built into the fabric of the fact that you're a human that you have to make mistakes. A child needs to fall a hundred times before a child's able to walk. That's how it works. That's the, that's the system that we're, we, we, we were created into. It's a system of trial and failure. Trial and failure. Trial and failure. That's how fail and trial. Fail and trial. That's how it goes. That is what was intended in the first place. It wasn't intended to be, I try, I perfect. I try, I succeed. Look at me. I'm just growing and growing and growing and there's no failure in sight. No. Something beautiful happens to us when we fail. Something amazingly strengthening happens to us when we make mistakes. And we know how to clean up our mistakes. It's not the making of the mistake that's bad. It's the not knowing how to clean it up that's bad. And that's what this class is about. This is what it's about. It's about understanding that everything is about your response to it. And when I don't have the correct response to the things that I experience in my life, she made me do it. It's his fault I am the way I am. It's my parents' fault I never learned how to read. It's my parents' fault I didn't have a good upbringing. It's my grandmother's fault because she used to hit my mother. And because she used to hit my mother, my mother used to hit me. So therefore, that's why I hit my kids today. Because, you know, it's chain reaction. So that is the incorrect way. The correct way to deal with your problems, with your mistakes, is to understand that A, it's okay that you made mistakes because it's part of your system. It's part of your, the fabric of your being. And we learn from mistakes and we evolve from mistakes and we become better than we can ever be by going through, by having mistakes, making mistakes, falling down on our faces. We can get further than we can ever get with just growth. Really something happens to us when we fall, we make mistakes and we look at what we did wrong and we take inventory and we take responsibility and we're able to go to the person and face the person and say, I did the wrong thing here and here. This was not the right reaction. I shouldn't have said the things this way. I was wrong. And stop, don't say, I was wrong, but it was because you got me heated up because you said this and this and this. That's not take responsibility. Taking responsibility means having the ability to have the correct response. And so Adam and Chava get kicked out of Gan Eden because not because of the fact that they ate from the forbidden fruit, only because of the fact that they were pointing fingers and blaming everything around them instead of saying, yeah, I ate from it. I was enticed. And I, bottom line, was the one that took it and put it in my mouth. No one can shove it into your mouth. No one can make you say those words. No one can force you to, to, to do something, really. It's you feeling that way and therefore then feeling the need to blame people when it doesn't work out. It's the understanding that number one, first and foremost, is I am the one that is responsible for, for my mistakes and being able to take responsibility for them. So here's what we're learning today. We're learning about this concept that my job in life, my only job in life, is to fix. My job in life is to fix. And what Hashem does to us, He's, He set it up in a very, very big way, in a very brilliant way, that everything is a mirror in my life. Every person that you meet, every encounter that you have, everything. It's a mirror. It's a mirror for you to look into. The Baal Shem Tov says, he says like this, it's called Torah Tamarot, the, the Torah of mirrors. He talks there in length and depth. I'm giving you, a literally, literally, we're learning the tip of the iceberg. I have a whole course on this, 14 hours. Okay, we're learning just the introduction to this concept. That he explains that if you look in the mirror and you see that in the mirror, there's like, it's something, there's something dirty in, you know, there's something dirty on your forehead. There's something, some dirt on your forehead, right? The idea is don't start cleaning the mirror. Don't start cleaning the mirror. Start cleaning your forehead. What you see in the mirror is an indication of what you're seeing on you, what's on you, right? He says the fact that you see it in another person, the fact that you see something that you do not like in another person, 
And this is the hard part to, to stomach, but listen to me, listen to me. Before you go running with this, okay? You don't know anything about this. I'm literally just giving a tiny, tiny little introduction. You don't know anything about this. I have, I know people that have taken this in such wrong directions. So simply put, what you see in another person that you don't like in them, that triggers you, the reason that it triggers you is because there is a Shemitz Minehu, the Baal Shem Tov says. There's a Shemitz Minehu, there's a little bit of that characteristic in here. That's why it gets on your nerves. That's why it triggers you. Because you're looking at yourself and you don't like what you're looking at. You don't like what you're looking at. And the Baal Shem Tov says, if you look at another person and you see a bad Mida, you just see like they're cursing, yelling, they're this, they're that. And what comes out of you, the first initial gut feeling that comes out of you is, I feel so bad for them. I feel, I feel horrible that he's having such a hard day. That this is how he's relaying his anger. That this is how he's taking it out. I feel bad for him. He's having a really hard day. If that's what comes out of you, that means that you're not looking in the mirror. If you have what comes out of you when you see another person's bad meadows is, is compassion, is I feel bad for them, is maybe I can help them out, is something along those lines, you're not looking in the mirror. That's something that you don't have an issue with. But if what you see in front of you makes you want to attack, makes you want to jump in their face, makes you want to hurt them, makes you want to blame them, attack them, whatever it is, what you see, if that's what it triggers in you, the Baal Shem Tov says, ah, Shemitz now. there's a piece of that characteristic that you don't like in them, in here. So the way the work of the mirrors goes is instead of cleaning the mirror, instead of now disciplining them and teaching them how to be and telling them where they're so wrong, instead of doing the work outside, instead of cleaning the mirror, come, come, let's clean it inside. And that is why oftentimes you will bump into people in your life you thought you divorced it and then you met it at work. You thought you left the job and then you met it in your second marriage. You thought you left your second marriage and then you met it in your best friend. It's that same thing that literally you hate and that you see it in people in your life. You got rid of one guy, you got the other guy, the other guy has... It's like the same thing. Why? Why do I keep attracting the same types of people with the same kinds of flaws? Why do I keep attracting the same kinds of problems and the same kinds of miseries? Why do I keep attracting the same issues in my life? Why? Why do I keep, do you see it happening in your life? Do you see how often it happens when there's like, it's, it's just like, yeah, I thought I got rid of it here. I, the boss, I, I left that job. I left that boss, that crazy abusive person. And all of a sudden I married it. How? Because if you keep bumping into it in your life and it keeps triggering you, it gets under your skin. You wanna, it makes you want to attack. It, want, it makes you want to fight. It makes you want to hurt the person back. It makes you want to cut the person out of your life. It makes, whatever it is, whatever it is that's triggering you, you got to know Hashem is putting up a mirror. So you don't want to look in the mirror. So you turn this way and Hashem is putting the mirror here. You don't want to look at the mirror. So you turn this way and Hashem is putting the mirror here. Wherever you go, Hashem is putting the mirror in front of you. Because my friend, he says to us, I love you. I love you. And nobody is objective. About ourselves, we're not objective. We're not objective about ourselves. We don't see the way we are on the outside. We don't see. We're not objective about ourselves. And so Hashem says, I'm going to hold up a mirror over the course of your life. Over the course of these 120 years while you're on this planet, I'm going to hold up a mirror. And wherever you go, if that one thing keeps following you around, if that one characteristic, that one mida, that one thing that you keep seeing in your best friend and your mom and your sister and your boss and your husband, and you just, and it's that one thing or those two things that you try to get away from that you feel are toxic for you and you keep bumping into them in your life, you have to know it, the reason you're seeing it there is because you have a piece of it inside of you. And because we're not objective, Hashem has to do it this way. He has to hold up mirrors for us that come in the form of people in our lives and situations in our lives because otherwise we'll never be able to see ourselves. We'll never, ever be able to see ourselves. 
And the whole goal, the whole goal is to really get to know myself. It's to really get to know myself and to evolve and to fix myself in a good way, right? It's not like I'm broken. It's not that I'm broken, so therefore I have to fix myself. It's that I come into this world like Play-Doh and Hashem says, go. He gives us a chunk of Play-Doh and he says, now go mold it. Go make it into a mensch. Make it into a person. Make arms and legs and a waist and a head. Form yourself. Create yourself. Don't let life's waves decide for you, decide for you how your life is going to look. This one came in, did this to me, I reacted this way. This one came in, did that to me, I reacted. Now there's no money, I react this way. There's, there's no husband, I react this way. My friend loves me, I react this way. Don't let the circumstances of your life toss you and throw you in whatever direction they want and then feel like a victim of your life because that's what happens. What we're saying here, Hashem says to us, I want you to learn because when you learn and you fix that, if that, that what's going on inside of you, what happens is that that thing disappears. It will disappear. Louise Hay. Louise Hay is a famous author, speaker. Uh, I, lo- I love listening to her. She has, uh, she has lots of different things. You can go look, at her, look her up, Louise Hay. And she has a part there that she discusses how the first something like 50 years of her life, she was always attracting abusive relationships. Her mother was very abusive. Her stepfather used to beat her. Then she was raped when she was 14. Um, she had like a very, very, very abusive life. Her life, she was always abused. And then she got married to an abusive man. It was like, you know, the abused keep getting abused and the abusers keep abusing, that kind of thing. And then she did the work. She did the work that we're learning in, in my breakthrough course that is in this course, Breakthrough 2, in Abdullah Crystal Eye. She did the work. She's not Jewish. And she did incredible work. And she said from the age, I think like 45 or 50, she started attracting a whole different tear of people. A whole different group. A whole different reality. You know, she, she, by the time she died, she left this world. She was way over her, in her 90s. Okay? And what she created in the world. And the mark that she left in the world. And the thousands, if not millions of people that she's helped heal in the world. Why? Because she did the work. She stopped going with the waves of life. She stopped going with the waves of what she was used to, what her brain was used to. Her brain was used to abuse, so she was always attracting abuse. She stopped and she started paying attention. And that's what these classes are for. These classes are for to help us start paying attention. Start paying attention to really what's going on and to be able to take our power back. The Baal Shem Tov says, stop blaming. Stop blaming. Stop getting angry at everyone. Stop blaming the world around you for what's going on inside of you. Realize that if it keeps coming back into your life, if you see something in another person that you dislike, that you don't like, a dishonesty, a manipulation, a, a type of, you know, uh, just something that you, a, something that you just really, really dislike, lying, okay? The way to fix that, the way to stop attracting people like that, the way to stop attracting attracting scenarios like that for yourself, situations, just feeling like you're like you're you can't trust the people that you're with. The way to stop attracting that, that we will be able to attract people that you do trust, people that are not liars, people that love you, people that are going to be there for you, people that are not going to abuse you. The way to start attracting that is to realize, my friend, stop thinking that it's external. The work is internal. And the way to fix it is very, very simple. The way to fix it is very simple. We're going to get to the fixing it later. But right now what we're talking about is this man, is this crystal eye. So the Pasuk says that the man comes down and it was like this like whitish thing. And then it looked like a crystal eye. And then Rashi there explains, what does it mean that it looks like a crystal eye? He explains that, you know how you take a crystal and you hold it up to the sun, you hold it up to the light. And then it has like every single like light, every single color from the spectrum shine out of it. That's what the man is like, which means the man has encompasses all the flavors and tastes like none. That's the man. The man is like a crystal eye. When you put it up to the light, a crystal, a crystal, you put it up to the light 
It has all the colors on the spectrum. But in and of itself, it doesn't have a color. That's the man. It tastes like anything you want it to taste like, but in and of itself, it doesn't have a flavor. Okay? And that's what it means, Ein Habdolach. Ein Habdolach means crystal eye, meaning it encompasses all the colors, but in and of itself, it doesn't have a color. Why are we learning this now? What does it have anything to do with anything? Listen to this. Listen to this. Every person ate the same man. Each person tasted something different. Every person ate the same thing, lived the same life. Has a, basically, we all have a roof over our head. Basically, we all have tires we drive. Basically, we all have the same basic stuff. They all got the same piece of man. They all got man. Each one got a piece. Each one had a different reality with it. Each one had a whole different experience with it. Each one had a whole different interaction with it. What was it based on? What was it based on? What was their experience based on? What was their flavor based on? What was their, what was their interaction with the man based on? It was based on where they were in their mind at that moment. Your life experience is always going to be filtered through the filter of your mind. Always. The objective reality is never objective. You're not living an objective reality. You're not. You're, li you're living a very subjective reality. Extremely. And the reason that it's subjective is because the way you're filtering it, the way you're seeing it, the way you're triggered by it is different than somebody else's experience of it. And what makes it different? What makes it different? What makes the vision of the reality different? What makes me get triggered and not her get triggered? What makes me, you know, want to fly off the handle and not the next guy? What makes me react in a way that's shooting myself in the foot and this one's not shooting themselves in the foot? Is what? Is the way I see it. The way I translate it. The way I view it. The, way, the translation that I give it, that's everything. It's the man. The man is whatever you think while you're eating it, that's what you taste. That's what you taste. You have $5 in your pocket, that's all you got to your name. Whatever translation you give that $5, that's the experience that you're going to have. That's the flavor that you're going to have in your life. How many people do we know that have like a quarter of what we have and like in terms of their spirit, in terms of their nature, in terms of their levels of happiness and energy, oh my gosh, they're like flying. They're happy. They're alive. They're, they're, they're not beautiful. They're not skinny. They don't have money. They don't drive a car. Like they don't, everything is hard for them. Okay. But they're, they're living, they're alive. They're doing, they have friends. They're how? And then you have this other guy, you know, he has like everything going for him everything going for him in his life. And he's unhappy. He's bummed out. He's unhappy. He's unhappy. He doesn't like his life. This is not good enough. That's not good enough. This one doesn't love me. This one just wants me for my money. This one's using me. This one's only out to get me. This one. Why? His experience, his taste of life is sour. Why? Because his translations are sour. But it's true, Devora. It's true. They are mistreating him. They are. It doesn't matter. There's nothing objective here. Don't you understand? Don't we understand? It's not about the objective reality. It's the spin that we put on it. It's the spin that we put on it. And what I'm saying right now, what I'm saying right now sounds like, what? Uh, uh, come on. My friends, I'm telling you that I've seen this work in so many people's lives, including my own, that when I started noticing then the thing that I don't like about her, what is it about it that makes me so, uh, what is it that gets on my nerves? What is it? And you'll see it most closely with your spouse or your children because they are very, very, very much, you know, an extension of you. So the things that really get on your nerves over there, things that really want to bite their head off, that's the stuff that you got to know. The reason you're attracting it is because you have it. The reason that you're seeing it is because you have a little piece of it. I'm not saying you have it to the extent that they have it. It doesn't necessarily mean that you have it to the level 
that they have it. It just means that if you notice it and it gets under your skin and it triggers you, shem it's me now. You have a piece of that on your soul. Do the work. Do the work. What does doing the work mean? Do yourself the biggest favor in the world and clean it off of you. Say, the only reason I'm seeing it in the other person is because I have it in myself. If I wouldn't see it, if I wouldn't have it in myself, I would not see it in them and it would not get on my nerves. You know, even if you see a bad media in another person, you see a flawed characteristic in another person, and it doesn't get under your skin, you just feel sorry for them, you don't have it in you. The Baal Shem says, you don't have it in you. You only have it in you if, it's, if it gets you. <clears throat> That's when you know you have it in you. So here's the thing. He says like this. He says, what's reality? No one really knows. It's interpreted by the person living it. Reality is an inter interpretation of your man. God gives you man. God gives you people. God gives you realities. Your interpretation of it will determine what you taste. If you feel like life is... Uh, uh, then you know what that means? It means that up here, you are cooking one nasty pot of meat, chalant. You're cooking yourself like one big nasty, like nasty. Like there's like, I don't know, there's like so dirty socks in there and peanut butter and like, I don't know, some nasty garbage in there. That's why life doesn't taste good to you. That's why life is not pleasing. That's why you're not happy. That's why you're not joyous. Why? Because it's the interpretation of what you're experiencing. It's the interpretation of the life that you're living that is giving you that bad flavor. That is giving you that bad flavor. So what are you supposed to do? You're supposed to elude yourself? You're supposed to be like, nah, what am I supposed to do? Like, fake it? Like, it is bad. I'm calling a spade a spade. It is bad. This person is bad. He is mistreating me. This is happening to me. It is bad. There's no way to go around this. It is bad. So no. So here's the thing. You ready? We attract a lot of what's coming to us. Why are there some women that would never get abused? Why? Why are there some women, many women, that abusive men become little tiny ants in their presence? How? Abusive men. How do they become little tiny ants in their presence? Why? Why? They're, they're stronger than the women that are abused? They're smarter? They're prettier? No. They're not. They just have a zero tolerance. And the women that do get abused, they don't have a zero tolerance. They have a tolerance. Why? Because the way they interpret what they deserve, the way they interpret what's coming to them, the way they see it, the way they interpret it, the way they interpret if this is okay or not okay, okay? is going to allow them to experience that experience based on how they interpret it. So if they say to themselves, you know, my mother used to get smacked around, it's okay. You know, men, you know, men do that. Like, just what happens, you know? If in their mind, their mind is not clear, is not, is not, is not honest, is not straight, but has been abused, they're, they, they're going to have a tolerance for abuse. And then they call forth the abuse. Hey, all abusers nationwide, come here. I like abuse. That's what they announce. They announce that energetically. And then the abusers, they find the victims like, like, like bees to honey. Because it's all energy. It's all energy. It's all energy. It's all energy. Our energy is determined it's created, it's based on our interpretation of our life. It's in term, and that's why it's so, so important to work on gratitude because what happens to a person that works on gratitude is that he finds beauty in, 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 in I don't know, in, in, in something stupid, in a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a cap. Oh my gosh, I have a cap, it's so nice. It's like for the winter. I don't know where this came from. I think it's my son's. Oh my gosh, look at this cap. Wow, I love this cap, such a cute cap. Even though like, who cares about the stupid cap? Like where does this, you know what I'm saying? Like, who, but if I'm just like, yeah, I have millions, whatever, who cares? Like, yeah, so what if my husband loves me? But like, you know, like my friends, like they didn't call me to dinner and like they didn't invite me. And like, so like everything feels like really bad now. Cause like when you twist, 
When you give things a negative twist, you will end up eating the bad porridge. You will end up eating, experiencing in your life. You won't like your life. You won't like it. You won't enjoy it. You won't like waking up to it every morning. It won't be fun. You'll constantly try to find ways to escape it and to avoid it. And that's what we're understanding here from this idea of Ein Abdullah. We're understanding that my ability to change the way I engage with life, to view it differently, turns out that this is the deepest healing of a person's pain, emotional, mental, and even physical. It's the ability to view the circumstances that come my way in a way that's not out to get me, that's now here to break me, but understand one thing. If it triggers you, you want to get rid of it in your life, get rid of it inside. If you get rid of it inside, it will disappear from the face of your life. It will disappear from the, the, the stage of your life. You will, not, you will no longer experience it. It will no longer be there, just like Louise Hay. She stopped attracting abusive men once she cleaned it up inside. She healed inside. She spoke kindly to herself. She translated life's situations not to be bad, not to be out to get her, not to be out to break her, not this one has got to get me, that one's out to hurt me, that one's out to steal from me, he's not loyal, she's not a best friend, he's not trustworthy, that guy wants to rip me off. Stop it! That is what is giving your life such a t tasteless experience. Understand? We give the translation to our lives. It's not... If I'll be, if I lose weight, then I'll feel good. If I get married, then I'll be happy. If I, uh, I don't know, I win the lotto, then I'll be happy. Honey, outside circumstances mean nothing. How many multi-billionaires in Hollywood do we know that are addicted to every drug in the market and that have gone in and out of rehab a thousand times and that have broken seven or eight marriages already and that have, how many? How many? It's all internal. It's all internal. You can have everything on the external and you're miserable. Miserable. Why? And Abdullah. The way we view it is what we're going to experience. It's what we're going to taste. It's the flavor that we're going to have in life. And Abdullah. Give yourself the opportunity to have an amazing life. And that's not just a, you know, a saying. We are our biggest investment in life. The more I invest in myself, the more I come to these classes, the more I invest in self, the more I learn how to, the more I learn how to pick up myself and be kind to myself and build myself from the inside and do the work. When I see it, I see myself getting triggered. What am I getting triggered on? What am I getting triggered about? If somebody's cheap, if somebody's cheap, your best friend, she's super cheap, she has serious issues with money, she can't, and it like really triggers you every single time, and you're like, I'm not like that, I'm so, you know, in Hebrew, we, in, in Israel we say, large, large it. I like love spending, come on me, I'm good, I don't have, I'm not like cheap like you are, right? What the truth is, you have some beef with money somewhere. If that gets under your skin. If her being stingy gets under your skin, there's something in you that has some issue with money in some way. Are you giving tzedakah? Are you giving meister? Are you able to give your smile away for free? How are you with giving? What's in there that gets under your skin? She's irrelevant. Your friend's irrelevant at the moment. Her issue with money... It's, the reason that you're seeing it, the reason that God is making you see it, specifically see it, is because he wants you to understand that, wait, 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 turn the lens inward. Turn the lens inward. Look inside, Devorah. Look inside for a second. The reason you're seeing it inside of her is because you're walking around with this. And it's a, and it's a stain. And it's creating blind spots in your life. And it's not allowing you to make better decisions. And it's keeping you stuck in a bad marriage. It's keeping you scared of getting married. It's holding you back from leaving your job and chasing your dreams. It's, look inside. 
you went out for a coffee with a friend and her nickel and, and, and dime counting gets on your nerves, it's an entire lesson if you do an abdolach. If you do an abdolach, instead of focusing on the fact that your friend is so annoying, all of a sudden you walk away with a huge lesson about yourself. A valuable lesson. That's all Hashem wants you to see. Mommy, you're not in the same place and you're stuck because I want you to be stuck. You're stuck because of the way you're, the way, what you're seeing. What you're seeing outside of you is an indication of what's going on inside of you. And this thing, it's shooting yourself in the foot. It's shooting you. It's holding you in the same place. It's not letting you move forward in your life. It's not letting you progress. It's not letting you meet the people that you're supposed to meet. It's not. It's holding you back. That's why I keep making you see it. So today it's your, your, your friend that's stingy. Tomorrow it's your husband that's stingy. The next day it's your boss that's stingy. You're like, what's going on? What's with everybody? Look how much I spend. Look how nice I am. It's not the point. It's not the point. It's coming to fix you. It's coming to heal you. That's why you're seeing it. The only reason you see something outside of you that gets underneath your skin is as coming as a mirror to you to say, hey, 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 look, look, look in the mirror for a second. Look in the mirror for a second. What do you see there? You see your issue with money? You see your issue with intimacy? You see your issue with trust? Do you see it? You see it, right? You see it so much inside of them. So you, you see, now you recognize that you have that, right? Now let's do the work. The biggest reason why people ha are, get, are stuck in life is because they don't know where to start working on themselves. They don't know what to do. They don't know how to get out of their situation. They don't know how to change their situation. They just don't. And En Abdullah is the secret recipe to understand, to give me an understanding, an inkling as to what I need to work on. As to what it is that's in my nefesh that literally is it's, it's a stumbling block. It's a stumbling block. It's like someone putting a foot in your way as you're walking and you're just tripping over their foot. These things in our nefesh, Shem, Shem says, I, you're not objective. You can't see yourself. You don't realize that you have these things going on. So I'm going to send you these images, these people, these experiences. And then and you're going to be like, oh, and this person's toxic. And oh, here he is again in a different form. Oh, that's toxic. Oh, there's that toxicity again. Oh, that's toxic. I don't want to see it. And really, it's the toxicity is in here. Remove it from in here, Hashem says. And that is really, it's just, you know, the idea here, there's, again, I told you I have, uh, I have an entire course on an Abdullah, and it's one of the, my, it's, it's like, it's one of my favorite things to learn and to teach. It's deep, it's heavy, it's, it's a lot of work. It's life-altering and life-changing. The concept is, the basic, basic concept that I gave during this class, just, just for you have, just you have one understanding of what's going on here is that <laughs> the people that are, we are surrounded by are the people that we are attracting. Why? Because like attracts like. And if you don't like what you see, stop trying to change it on the outside and realize that today you can stop attracting it into your life. You can stop attracting the narcissists or the codependents or the abusers or the people that are toxic. You can stop attracting all of those people and move into a whole new level of living, friendships, relationships, professional life. You can move into a whole new level if you realize that Hashem is doing something here. He's not going to let you move to the next level. You're not moving to the next level until you clean this up. Because this is the thing that's screwing it up for you. This is screwing it up for you when it's inside of you. So instead of running away from all these people, understand that the reason you're attracting these people and the reason that these people are in your life in the first place is because there's something inside of you that's attracting them. Like attracts like. Look at it in the other person. See it. Recognize it. What is it that gets on your nerves? What is it that triggered you? What is it that got under your skin? What is it that hurt you? What is it that triggered? What is it? And then look in the mirror and say, where do I have a piece of that? It doesn't have to be to the extreme level. Shemetz minehu. Where do I have a piece of that inside of me? Where am I stingy? Am I stingy with compliments? Am I stingy with money? Am I stingy with my smile? Am I stingy with my home? Where am I stingy? Why am I seeing stinginess everywhere? Why am I seeing anger everywhere? Where am I angry? 
Where am I angry? Why am I seeing, why am I seeing, you know, dishonesty everywhere? Where am I dishonest? Where am I dishonest with myself? Where am I lying to myself? Where am I eluding myself? Where am I staying in my comfort zone and making up excuses over and over again as to why it's impossible for me to step out of it? Where am I shooting myself in the foot? Where? And it's very, very hard to find it without a mirror. But God will make sure to send mirrors into your life by your the piece of you. It has an energy to it. That shemitz minehu, that stinginess, that anger, that sadness, that whatever that mida is, it has an energy to it. It has a pulse. And you know what? It attracts like-minded, similar pulses, vibrations. It attracts similar vibrations. I don't want this vibration in my life anymore. I don't want this toxic person in my life. I don't want narcissists in my life. I don't want abusers in my life. I don't want, I don't want friendships like this. I don't want relationships like this. I don't want jobs like this. I don't want it in my life. You, so, 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 instead of getting busy removing it, blocking this one, blocking that one, crossing this off, leaving that, moving out of there, divorcing that. Instead of that, look here and say, wait, 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 Hashem, what are you trying to show me? What are you trying to show me? What are you trying? I know I'm not stingy with money, but where am I? I know that I don't get that angry, but where do I? And those are the places that once we do the work there, once we start becoming aware, and remember awareness is 50% of the game, 50% of the healing is awareness. Becoming aware that you have issue with complimenting people, with blessing people. You're stingy with your words. You have an issue with, you know, having a guest over. You, you, have, you have an issue there. Why do you have an issue there? Start getting to know yourself and healing yourself in those areas. And again, the number one place to heal yourself is number one, first and foremost, is to become aware. Just to become aware. And it's okay that you have that problem. And it's okay that you have that bad mida. And it's okay that you made that mistake. Just don't blame the world for it like Adam and Chava did. Because then you won't have a place to live. Because then you'll be riddled, God forbid. A person gets riddled with anxiety and overwhelm and anger and all the things that surface because, because they, they're busy with looking outside of themselves and blaming the world and cutting people out and talking to Shanhara instead of saying one second, one second. Mm, I don't want to have this little magnet inside of me that keeps pulling these people in or these circumstances in. I don't want to have that magnet. Let me do the work there. If you want to join my breakthrough classes, my breakthrough courses, they're life-changing. The first one, breakthrough, and the second one, breakthrough to Crystal Eye, which is what we just started learning right now a little bit of, are things that have completely, both of these teachings have taken my life in um, healing has become my number one goal in life and understanding that when I am healed and when I know how to take life as it comes my way and realize that I don't write the script of my life. <laughs> I don't write the script. The script comes and I have to align myself to it. The better I align myself to the script without kicking and screaming and fighting and arguing with the script, with the circumstances that God sends me, but aligning myself with, oh, I thought I was going to be this way. Oh, I thought I was going to be happily married and have, oh, divorced. Oh, okay. The more I'm able to align myself with God's will, with God's script, the more I'm able to be at peace with myself. And the more my life will be a place that I will like waking up into every day. Like seeing every morning. Like being a part of. That is the idea. So if you'd like to join my classes, join my courses, the information, uh, how to follow me, how to uh, find me, uh, how to join my co courses is somewhere around this video. I'm assuming that, that they put it up here. Uh, it's on the link on the Light of Infinite, um, Light of Infinite, infinite or you can google my name Deborah Siso and you can find me that way I look forward to seeing you in the future and good luck to us all good luck to us all and remember one thing whatever you want you can have you just have to remember one thing that you, you get to want things but it's not on your shoulders to completely figure it out and do all the work and get it all done. A big part of healing and a big part of moving up on the ladder 
and attracting new kinds of people and, and stopping to attract tox, toxic people or stopping and just like really moving up on the ladder. A big part of it is knowing that Hashem, it's in your hands. I realize that I have this and this and this in my nefesh that's holding me back. This limited belief, this low self-esteem about something, this anger issue, this, I know that these things are holding me back. God, help me heal. Help me overcome them. Help me upgrade. That's what I want. And when you ask for Siyad Dishmaya and you do the work, you will move. You will grow. And you will start attracting a whole new level of reality. Your man will start to taste like, I don't know, what do you want it to taste like? That's what it's going to taste like, as opposed to the stuff that you don't like. Thanks for following. Thanks for joining. I hope you enjoy the rest of this amazing festival. And uh, God willing, we'll meet again soon. Take care.